Our guest on This is America and the World is Ambassador George Kristen Maior. Currently, Ambassador Maior is Romania's ambassador to the United States. He formerly served as director of the Romanian Intelligence Service, Chargé d'Affaires at the Romanian Embassy in Ireland, and as a senator in the Romanian Parliament. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for visiting with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Romania. I'm reading about Romania, and it says it is the most pro-USA country in Europe. How did that come about? Well, this is first of all true. Uh, each opinion poll shows that 80% of Romanians at least consider U.S. as their best friend and mm. their best ally. And I think it has a certain historical root uh, going back to the First World War when uh, President Wilson with his 14 points really uh, assisted uh, strongly countries from Central and Eastern Europe in their uh, quest for self-determination uh -huh. uh, after the war at the peace conference in Paris. So uh, you m might be amazed, but uh, President Wilson in that uh, period of time, especially with his travels in Europe, was very popular in the uh, mental uh, mentality uh, of Romanians because of his uh, very progressive vision on international relations uh -huh. in a difficult historical period for us. Uh -huh. So this t might be true, but also going back to the years or dark years of communism. I mean, Romanians always expected the uh, U.S. Uh, to assist them in their struggle again for self-determination from the communist camp. And mm -hmm. it was always an image of U.S. as a beacon of freedom, liberty, democracy that really appealed with the Romanian people. Ah, uh, currently, uh, you know, now in modern times, we have uh, some military interests there, don't we as well, with the missile shield? Help yeah. me understand that a bit. Yeah, it's a strong uh, defense uh, relationship uh, between our countries, not only a political one, not only a diplomatic one, but uh, for example, we are uh, the fourth largest contributor with troops in Afghanistan. Yes, Alongside yes. Uh, with your soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, this, uh, project you've mentioned, uh, uh, missile uh, defense, um, in fact the first naval military base established by U.S. outside uh, America in 30 years. Uh, it's a, a naval military base considered, uh -huh. ages ashore, and uh, it's based in Romania, uh, it's operational since uh, 2016, and that links us uh, together strongly in terms of security and defense. But you also have a rotational base uh, at the Black Sea mm -hmm. in a nice city called uh, Constanza, which is used for the transit of troops uh, to Afghanistan. So strong military links. Uh, so your yeah. uh, position on the Black Sea as a port there, that's crucial, isn't it? Huh? It is because the Black Sea, it's a very complicated uh, area right now for various reasons. One of them, of course, we all speak about uh, events uh, in Crimea, events in Georgia. Uh, this uh, sea separates now um, uh, EU and NATO from the eastern part of uh, those organizations, the eastern mm -hmm. frontier, Russia of course, uh, so much uh, spoken about uh, during those days for various reasons. So it's a very complicated uh, region uh, from a security standpoint. And Romania, as a NATO member, as a EU member, is a staunch ally uh, of U.S. In Historically, of, I'm sorry, go ahead and finish In terms thought. of promoting our uh, common security interests, in mm. terms of stability, in terms of uh, security, I, I, I found it fascinating to see the position of Romania in the Second World War. You yes. mentioned the First World War, at one time uh, fighting against the Soviet Union with Germany and then turning <coughs> around and fighting against Germany with the Soviet Union and then communism comes along. Huh? Well, sometimes geography is difficult uh, for a country like Romania and for other countries. Of course, no country can be a prisoner of geography, but the situation 
uh, during uh, that difficult historical period was that Romania was caught in between powerful forces, so the Nazi Germany, uh, the Soviet Union, and uh, it was forced uh, into uh, alliances it didn't really mm. want, <clears throat> but it had no choice uh, because of the power politics uh, of that era. Mm. Uh, finally, of course, uh, the fact that Romania, uh, as we say, uh, rejoined the alliance uh, with U.S., uh, some historians say that uh, really managed to shorten the war. Hmm. With uh, six months, at least six months, because the entire Eastern Front of uh, Germany was uh, uh, put under pressure uh, because of this gesture. Hmm. The entire uh, oil supplies, for example, for the German uh, army were based uh, in Romania, which was very rich in oil yes. and gas. And, uh, because of that, it really generated a uh, 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 critical situation uh, for uh, the German military. But mm. those are historical facts. Now, we are in an alliance uh, with you. We are a strong NATO member mm -hmm. uh, with a great contribution to collective security. And uh, again, a very, very strong partnership with your country in all fields. Mm. 20 years now we celebrate uh, the initiation of this strategic partnership by the visit of uh, President Clinton uh, to Bucharest back in 97. Mm -hmm. uh, the October, just to uh, finish that piece, and, and yes. I know it's painful, uh, but uh, the October 9th uh, Holocaust Remembrance is in, uh, is a, uh, a, a, a an important date in uh, history for you currently now to remember uh, the victims of the Holocaust, huh? Yeah, Romania assumes uh, its uh, historical responsibilities, and uh, in fact, uh, we held the presidency of the International Holocaust Remembers uh, Day uh, mm -hmm. two years ago. We were head of this organization, and uh, I think we are one of the models in terms of uh, assuming our past and uh, uh, really uh, introducing legislation uh, for the remembrance of the Holocaust, uh, but also for the protection of national minorities. Mm -hmm. right so a big, a big yeah. change over the years. Uh, let me take a little break right now. Uh, we're talking with the uh, ambassador from Romania to the United States, uh, Ambassador Maior, is giving us a, 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 an education about his country and that part of the and that part of the world, which is thrilling for us. So we'll ask the folks at home to sit tight. This is America and the World. This is America and the World is brought to you by the Libra Group, the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. John and Mary Papajohn, the American Hellenic Institute, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President, the National Hellenic Society, preserving Hellenic heritage in America, Katerina Panagopoulos, the Barakis Foundation, the League of Arab States, the Rotondaro Family Trust, and the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Mr. Ambassador, when we talk about the yeah. uh, Balkan countries, and we'll put a map on the screen, tell me a little bit about your neighbors and the role that Romania plays in the, in the area. This is an important country. Yeah. Well, the Balkans were a, a metaphor for a very, let's say, to use a mild term, complicated politics. <laughs> and I think part of our history is escaping, uh, let's say, the Balkans as uh, geography. So we consider ourselves a Central European country bordering the Balkans. Uh -huh. The Balkans now of course, are our neighbors, and we're doing a lot uh, in assisting them in terms of democratization, stabilization, 
you mentioned neighbors. Serbia is one of our neighbors, a country that is, uh, of course, engaged on a path uh, towards uh, the European Union. We're trying to do our best to keep them on this track. Mm -hmm. It has a, a powerful historical legacy in terms of uh, what happened in the 90s, uh, unfortunately, in that mm -hmm. area. Of course, Hungary is another neighbor, a member uh, of uh, EU, a member of NATO. Ukraine, uh, our northern neighbor, a country you know very well, passing through a, a difficult period, many challenges. Moldova, a special mm -hmm. country for us because uh, the spoken language in Moldova is uh, Romanian. Mm. Uh, it's a country that uh, represents a lot for us historically, in uh, civilizational terms, in cultural terms. We are trying to uh, assist them on their track towards the EU, uh, which is not easy because it's a small country neighboring Russia. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Black Sea... they're kind of focused in that direction, aren't they? Yes. Uh, well, it's, uh, the population is very much uh, oriented towards uh, EU, especially the young population. And uh -huh. we have, uh, of course, uh, programs that uh, try to um, extend uh, over their uh, concepts related to rule of law, justice, uh, market economy. So you're setting the example. Trying to set the example. We're trying the... to. We're trying to do that, mm -hmm. and I think uh, this means a lot in terms of uh, the mission of a country, uh, which wants to extend uh, values, extend uh, democracy and uh, uh, political stability in difficult uh, regions. Again, mm -hmm. of course, the Black Sea I've mentioned, mm -hmm. which uh, <coughs> uh, there was a say in Romania a um, long time ago. It's our best neighbor, the Black Sea. <laughs> well, it's not the best neighbor anymore because it's very complicated from yeah. a security standpoint. Wow. Uh, Crimea is being heavily militarized yeah. uh, now after those events, and uh, we have to generate uh, at the eastern frontier of NATO a strong element of deterrence uh, because of those uh, negative developments and that's not easy as you uh, uh, sketch it out for yes. us and, and let's not forget bulgaria of course our good neighbor in the south uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, which is a member of nato and eu and uh, we have a good uh, relationship with them so those are the surrounding the surroundings of uh, it's Romania. complicated isn't it it's very complicated it's complicated. Romania is the largest state in the region mm -hmm. uh, with a population of uh, more than 20 million. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But again, it's trying to set an example, uh, not only in terms of uh, maintaining stability and security, uh, having a prosperous economy, but also uh, in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, offering a model in terms of uh, democratic development, mm -hmm. rule of law, which is important. You had your own political turmoil this year in, in, in June, wasn't well, it? Uh, no, it, it was in, uh, in uh, January. In January. Fact. Yes. Uh, uh, it's also a sign of very uh, civic uh, activists uh, uh, that characterizes uh, the Romanian people. So when they have something to say, they say it in the, a civil, uh, civilized manner, so they can demonstrate, they can uh, protest. Uh, they certainly did, didn't they? they can huh? up, upheld in principles they yeah. believe in, and that's very good. But it was, it was mm. around uh, s uh, some corruption, uh, government corruption, and the young people came out, the city people came out, the educated people came out. No, it was about uh, debates in the society, which are healthy debates, uh, uh, surrounding uh, legislation uh, pertaining uh, to the justice uh, system. So uh, it was uh, a period of civic activism. Uh, that's a good way to say it, though. <laughs> no, <laughs> civic it, it's, a, it's, it's a reality. Yeah. It's a reality, and uh, uh, it was very healthy for the evolution of uh, the democratic process. The young people yeah. want the transparency, right? They of want course, the, the of values course. of democracy, and they want uh, to have uh, westernization, right? They, they want of course, these. and they have it uh, yeah. in Romania, and uh, they're very active. Uh, they're very knowledgeable about developments, very well informed. Uh, yeah. 
a good spirit in terms of uh, uh, always keeping uh, the debate uh, in terms <laughs> alive of, and well uh, huh? alive and well <laughs> yes yes uh, bucharest is the capital uh, bucharest is the capital it's a beautiful city i hear and i've seen the pictures yes. my lord just yeah. beautiful in the interwar period, it was called Little Paris, uh, and that's a good comparison because uh, the architecture, the boulevards, uh, the, the houses, uh, some of the old houses, the museums, uh, the restaurants uh, were very similar in atmosphere, in um, architecture uh, with that of Paris. And now it's a city that is developing uh, tremendously well. Uh, with a uh, <clears throat> population always inclined towards uh, artistic movements, uh, uh -huh. towards theater, opera. Uh -huh. So uh, you should uh, travel and see well, We'd yourself. love to come. <laughs> we'd love to come, believe you me. Uh, the uh, uh, Something I read, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about the economy, but what you've yeah. uh, set the tone for is tourism is, is very important. And something uh, that I came across suggested it was it was the best of the old and the best of the new that 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 you could get both flavors at the same time. But what what uh, in addition to the tourism, what drives the economy there? Well, uh, it's a diverse economy. Uh, it's uh, based on uh, manufacturing, on uh, the exploitation of natural resources, for example. One of your biggest companies, Exxon, is operating in mm -hmm. the Black Sea, mm -hmm. extracting or uh, <clears throat> uh, starting to extract uh, oil and uh, gas from uh, the Black Sea. Uh, a diverse, uh, a diverse structure of. The I read everything yes. from electronics to uh, yeah. cars, IT, automobiles. Exactly, uh, Ford has uh, its Ford. biggest plant in Central and Eastern Europe, based in uh, Romania, uh, in the southern part of Romania, uh -huh. with a strong production of uh, cars uh, for internal consumption, but also for exports uh, in Europe. Um, the IT industry is vibrant, really. Ah. I mean, we are very well uh, known for this. Uh, very good engineers, uh, many polytechnical schools that uh, uh, have a specialization in this field. Uh, in fact, we are, I think, uh, among the 10 countries in terms of uh, the internet, uh, interconnectivity, mm -hmm. and um, that's, that says a lot uh, about uh, how technology uh, can really move forward uh, the economy uh, of a country. So uh, many agriculture is very uh, mm -hmm. um, developed uh, in Romania. Uh, so many, many uh, aspects related to the economy. Uh, one, one thing which is interesting, uh, it's the fastest growing economy now in uh, yeah. the European Union with a constant uh, growth of uh, five, five 5.5 percent uh, annually. How did that come about? What, what's going on there? Now the basis of production, as I've mentioned, uh, the introduction of new technologies, uh, very skilled workforce, hmm. uh, exports also. Yeah. What's the commitment of the country to say things like uh, education, uh, medical <coughs> services, uh, uh, older people? Talk a little bit about that social part of uh, Romania? Uh, well, uh, you must understand, Dennis, that uh, we had to overcome great difficulties uh, after the communist period because communism in Romania, uh, I think it was the most, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, even uh, cruel in terms of uh, its interpretation of uh, the state economy, the command economy, and uh, the ideological uh, mm -hmm. uh, rigid uh, interpretation of Marxism. So we had practically the entire uh, property owned by the state. So we had to shift from uh, a state owned economy to a market economy, which mm -hmm. is not an easy process, not even for uh, great uh, uh, experts in economy. 
But we did that with lots of sacrifices uh, during those uh, 25 years, more than 25 years. And uh, now, because again, of a very dynamic young generation, uh, very uh, capable in terms of uh, assimilating uh, knowledge and education to create a market economy, very diverse, uh, very vibrant, mm -hmm. uh, which now keeps us uh, uh, in a growth mode, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that part of Europe, which is very good. I hope it's sustainable. I think it's sustainable, and I think the future is bright for me. The, um, uh, some of the uh, ambassadors that I will sit with will say yeah. that uh, they have a, uh, a 2020 plan or a 2030 plan or something like that. What, what would you say are the, uh, the goals over the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years uh, in Romania and what do you see as the primary challenges? Let's well, the, put those together. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good question. I think the primary goal is to complete the infrastructural projects uh, that are needed uh, for Romania. Highways, railroads, uh, modernized, and that's uh, a big challenge, it's ongoing. Uh, it's also a question of uh, more efficiently using uh, uh, EU funds in this respect. A second aspect will be uh, to obtain, and that's very important also from a political and a geopolitical point of view, to obtain complete independence in terms of energy, which mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. an, an attainable goal, uh, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about uh, the resources we have mm -hmm. uh, uh, ourselves, and uh, making the economy more competitive, uh, more uh, open to innovation. Mm -hmm. And here, our cooperation uh, with uh, your country is very, very relevant. When you look at the European Union and you look yes. at the European countries, what do you see? We must see the solid because you know, it's it's a must. It's a, a project that uh, it's uh, linking countries together, populations uh, together, nationalities together. It's a wonderful project in terms of uh, international relations, in terms of democracy and peace, in terms of economy, in terms of in terms of creating uh, a pole of uh, economic growth uh, mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. part of the world. So because of that, we are not only very pro-Americans, we are also very pro-Europeans, yes. which is not always easy. <laughs> we have uh, just <laughs> a, a minute or so left, uh, but you were kind enough, uh, yeah. Ambassador, and asked Darren in our control room if they can come in a little closer on, on these 135-year uh, uh, relationship uh, between uh, our two countries, and this is a commemorative uh, stamp? Exactly, commemorative that... stamp. We celebrated uh, three years ago, two years ago, 135 years of diplomatic relations, so that's uh, uh, quite a period in historical uh, terms. And uh, it speaks a lot about uh, the profound uh, interaction between our countries uh, over uh, historical periods of time. And this uh, is also says so much about the country, these uh, beautiful stamps of the castles that you all have, huh? Yes, there are castles from uh, various parts of Romania, especially uh, Transylvania. Of course, in uh, another historical part of Romania, Moldova, we have the famous uh, monasteries uh, from the 16th, 15th century. So it's a country with a, a long history, a country that has managed to forge a, a powerful identity uh, at the intersection point of many empires uh, uh, activating uh, in this region, uh, Habsburgs, uh, Ottomans, uh, ah. the Russians. But we managed uh, to survive, forge an identity, and uh, generate uh, a strong member of NATO and EU, and a good partner, very good partner for your country. Mr. Ambassador, at the end of our time, uh, I know that you have been uh, awarded a medal by our CIA here for your uh, intelligence work over the years. And uh, if memory serves me correctly, you have some study here at the George Washington University yeah, as well. It was well. a wonderful period in my life back in the 90s to study at this uh, very good university. 
Of course, in my previous capaci capacity, I headed the Romanian intelligence service, yeah. one of the most competent now in the world, and a very good cooperation with uh, your agencies in this area. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for the education. Thank you for telling us so much about uh, Romania. Thank you, and I invite you to visit uh, with your team. A We'd love to country. come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. For information about This is America and the World, and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can now listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our new podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by the Libra Group, the Stavros Niarchos Foundation, John and Mary Papajohn, the American Hellenic Institute, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The National Hellenic Society, preserving Hellenic heritage in America. Katerina Panagopoulos. The Barakis Foundation. The League of Arab States. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. <laughs>